Ten years ago, I'd been out for a fantastic night out in London. I'd been dancing the night away. So I decided, with my cousin, to get the bus home. We went upstairs, went to the back of the bus, and sat down. As the bus got into Streatham in South London, everybody else had got off. A group of six lads got on the bus with a ferocious-looking dog. They came upstairs, they walked towards us, they sat down in the seats in front of us, and they blocked our exit. As soon as the bus pulled off, they turned, started to attack. Four of them using their fists, but two of them pulled out hammers and started to strike us over the head with the claw end of a hammer. We decided not to fight back and try and escape because we were petrified that if we punched the dog's owner, the dog would viciously attack. So we decided to try and block the blows as best we could. Now, thankfully, for some unknown reason, as soon as we got to the next stop, they just turned and walked away, leaving us in utter shock, bleeding profusely. But thankfully, we recovered, and I'm here to tell the tale today. Now, in a utopian world, those rule breakers would have been brought to justice. See, there was CCTV on that bus, but the police weren't able to use it to identify any suspects. So it was that day that I vowed that never more would technology fail us in our quest for a safer and more just world. But it wasn't until I visited the courthold and came across Nevermore by Gauguin that it became clear to me exactly how I could help. You see there in the background, you see a raven. And to me, that signifies the evil rule breaker waiting to prey on the lady in the foreground exposed and vulnerable. But you see there in the background are two people, and they could make a difference if only they knew how. And those two people, that's each and every one of us, that's society. And today, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you all how you can step forward and become a digital superhero and unleash your superpowers to make the world a safer place. And we all have three superpowers. We have the power to prevent, we have the power to respond, and we have the power to solve. For each superpower, I'm going to tell three stories. And I hope some of these stories are really going to connect with your hearts and your minds and inspire you to take action. So let's start with the first of our stories. Last year in the United Kingdom, there were more than 700,000 burglaries. That's more than one a minute. Now, traditionally, what burglars would do is they'd look to see if you're out. Are the lights on? Are the curtains moving? Is the post being collected? And then they'd break in. But they'd be worried that you're going to come back. So the average burglary would only last 10 minutes. But you see, in a digital world, that's all changed. So you see, now they're looking at your pictures, your posts, your location updates. So not only do they know that you're out, they know how long you're away for, and from your pictures, they know what high-value items to look for when they break in. In a recent study, 75% of convicted burglars said they're using social media to target their victims. So the first thing we can do to use our superpower is to be discreet. I mean, you wouldn't walk down the street going, hey, hey, I'm going on holiday, and by the way, I've just bought a new bike and a new laptop, and the back door's open, so why on earth would you do that on social media? So my advice is simple. Don't boast. Be a ghost when you post. <laughs> so that's the first thing we can do to prevent. Now, the second thing we can do is we can use devices, but not to catch the rule breakers who are the criminals but to prevent ourselves from becoming rule breakers. You see, I'm a rule breaker because I've driven a car when I'm tired and almost fallen asleep at the wheel. Not only could I have taken my own life, but I could have taken the life of other road users. See, last year on our roads, there were, globally this is, 1.3 million people were killed. 50 million people were injured in road accidents across the globe. And 20% of those road accidents were caused by driver fatigue. Well, no more. 
because you see there is a Bluetooth device that not only connects to your phone, but it monitors your head movement, it monitors your blink rate, and if you start feeling drowsy, it alerts you. Now, hopefully none of you are going to need one of those today while I'm talking to keep you awake. But seriously, who's got one? Why not? So that's the second thing. The third thing are social safety apps. And these really resonate with me. Because the reason that we were um, victimized on that bus is because we were alone. We were isolated. See, criminals like an easy target. So if we can use technology to connect with our friends, with our families, with our communities and with our neighbors, we make it harder for them to target us. And digital technology can help. You see, now there are social safety apps. And they allow us to share our GPS trace with people we trust who we want to protect and follow us. So for example, if you're walking home every night in winter and it's dark, as soon as you come out of your train station, you get off your bus, you can click your app, and people in your community who you trust can follow your trace as you walk home. As you pass their window, you can look in and go, hi, how are you? But most importantly, if your GPS trace was to unexpectedly stop, or if you were to trigger the alarm, they could come rushing to your aid and hopefully prevent something bad happening. And because they're very near you, they can get to you a lot quicker than the police could. Who's using social safety apps to protect themselves and their loved ones? Why not? So that's the power to protect. Let's move on to the power to respond and talk about messaging. Now, I'd like you to all put a picture in your heads. A parent is driving a vehicle. They drive into a petrol station. They've got a 20-week-old baby in the back of the car. They pull in, they get out, they fill up with petrol, and they close the door. Leave the baby inside and go off to pay for that petrol. But while they're inside paying for that petrol, someone breaks into the car and drives off with the baby in the back. The parent immediately calls the police. And they immediately alert every unit in the area to look for that car and that number plate. So now, a handful of eyes are now looking for that child and that car. But wouldn't it be great if through digital messaging, we were able to send out a text message with the details of that vehicle and the details of that registration plate to every single person within a 10-mile radius. Imagine how much greater our probability of finding that child would be if thousands of eyes were now looking for that vehicle with that child in it. Well, that technology exists. That's called an Amber Alert in the United States. And 800 children have been rescued based on information provided by citizens in response to those messages. And here's the great news. We have the same system available to us here in the UK to keep our children safe. It's called Child Rescue Alerts. When are you going to register? The next thing I'm going to talk about is the use of identification technology. Last year in the United Kingdom, there were a staggering 250,000 people reported missing. We've just heard about male suicide. There were more than 6,000 suicides in the United Kingdom last year. These are people in their greatest hour of need. Now, let's think about what would happen if, as soon as somebody reported someone missing to the police, if they were up, able to upload a photo and our CCTV camera network across the country was able to help find that person and alert the police. If we were able to identify them in their greatest hour of need, we could send a team to them with a mental health worker to help them out. Facial the facial identification technology to do that exists, it works, but it's not being used widely yet. So when are we, as a society, going to embrace facial identification in the same way that we've already embraced CCTV cameras? And finally, I'm going to talk about awareness. You see, knowledge is power. If we know, we can respond. So if, for example, in your community, 
Your neighbours are telling you that there's a load of bogus callers calling on doors, trying to get into your home. And a stranger comes to your door that day. What are you going to do? Well, you're going to be a lot more careful about whether you let them in. And if you do answer the door, you're certainly going to use the chain. If your neighbours tell you there's been a spate of robberies in the area and cars are being stolen of a similar make to you, what are you going to do? Maybe you'll get that security light fixed that you haven't quite got round to. Maybe you'll fix that alarm sensor and actually start setting your alarm again. Maybe you'll check all your doors and windows are shut. You see, if we know we can do things, we can make it harder for the criminals to target us. Knowledge gives us the power to respond. And here's the great news. There are community sharing platforms that allow each and every one of us to post and share information with our neighbours and with our communities. So there is no longer an excuse for not knowing what's going on. I'm forever telling my son, sharing is caring. And the saying has never been truer for us. So when are you all going to sign up to a community messaging platform? The final thing I'm going to talk about now, obviously, is the power to solve. Now, a couple of years ago, there were a spate of bank robberies. And the police had no idea who was doing those bank robberies. So they turned to a data analyst, someone a bit like me, and they said, can you help? Now, because there had been a series of robberies, the analyst was able to look for patterns in that data. How much was taken each time? What days of the week? What times on those days? How far between branches? And was able to predict a target set of branches where the robber was likely to go next, on what days and on what times of those days. And holy Batman, the police put patrols outside those branches and the robber turned up and they caught him in the act. You see, that's the power of predictive analytics. You can only be unpredictable once, because after that, it becomes a pattern. So my question here is, how are we, and really I'm looking at police forces here, how are we going to use the full power of predictive analytics to keep us safe? The next thing I'm going to talk about is the power of we, crowd solving. La uh, uh, well, not last year, there are over 200,000 unsolved murders in the United States. That means potentially there are 200,000 murderers walking free on the streets of the United States. Now, three years ago, New Year's Eve, Mike Pimentel was murdered in 2012. And although the police had some really distinctive clues, a distinctive shoe, a distinctive keychain, distinctive hair extensions, even faces of people they wanted to talk to in relation to that murder, they weren't able to solve it. So they turned that challenge over to citizens, and in a really novel approach, they said, can you help? The citizens embraced the challenge, and the police took a really novel approach. What they did is every Saturday, at a certain time, they would post a new clue. So that army of citizens, many who downloaded the podcast serial, would log on and try and work out who'd done it. And each week, as more clues uh, were released, they got more and more information and were able to provide tips. And again, here's the great news. In December, just three months ago, Mike Pimentel's murder was caught and arrested based on information gathered from that crowd-solving campaign. Now, there are apps available to us here in the UK that allow us to get involved in crowd-solving, apps that allow us to identify wanted people, wanted criminals within our area. So how are you going to get involved in helping to solve crimes in your local area? Ooh. Together, we can. The final thing I'm going to talk about is a dark topic and sensitive topic. But I'm afraid we have to talk about it, because global online paedophilia is a major issue. And one of the ways that our law enforcement agencies tackle it is by creating fake online profiles of children. Now, sometimes those fake online profiles can just be a social media account. But a team of researchers in the Netherlands went one step further. You see, they created a digital hologram of a 10-year-old girl called Sweetie and they put that hologram online. 20,000 
predators interacted with Sweetie. A thousand of those predators offered Sweetie money in response for sexual favours. And 110 of them were identified as being here in the United Kingdom. You see, that is the power of digital personas, to infiltrate and identify who is taking place in criminal networks. But there is no further plan to use Sweetie, the hologram, to infiltrate networks. So again, my question, again aimed really at law enforcement, is how are we going to use digital personas to keep us safe online? So there you go, you see, we've seen the power to prevent, the power to respond, and the power to solve. And if you use those superpowers, then never more, never more does technology need to fail you in your quest for a safer and more just world. Now, I only wish I'd had those um, technologies available to me 10 years ago. If I had a community platform that told me gangs were attacking people on the bus, maybe I'd have got a taxi home that night. If the police had crowd-solving or facial identification technologies, maybe they'd have caught the guys that attacked us on the bus and they'd have been off the street instead of being left free to attack other people. Now, hopefully, I've inspired you all to want to take some action. But if you won't listen to me, then listen to Einstein. He famously once said that it's not those that do evil, the rule breakers, that will destroy our world. It's those of us that watch on and do nothing. So my final plea to you is simple and heartfelt. Become a digital superhero and keep the rule breakers at bay. Unleash your digital superpowers and make our world safer by night and day. If you want more information on how, please reach out to me on Twitter, at statman underscore who, or find me on LinkedIn. My door is always open, unless you're a burglar. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>